Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Celtic Warband here, and thanks for tuning in to an epic battle in Empire Total War. I think this is my very first Empire Total War upload. I have uploaded a couple from Napoleon Total War, but never something from Empire. And it is a one versus one naval battle submitted by the Red Celt, so thank you very much for submitting it. And the other opponent as well, Son of Caliber Moore, is pretty active on my Discord. But I don't really have enough naval content on my channel, and this has kind of sparked me to maybe get a little bit more out there for you guys within the next coming weeks. So stay tuned for that, but I really do hope you enjoy this battle, and let's go ahead and take a look at the army comps. The first navy on the battlefield today is the United Provinces, commanded by the Red Celt. And we're going to take a look at the larger ships on the left-hand flank first off, and then we'll kind of head over to the smaller ships on the right. But most of his heavy hitters are over here on the left-hand flank, the far left-hand flank. We've got the... Kurvarsten van Brandenburg, heavy first rate, which is 122 guns, 300 man crew. You can see the uh, enemy already firing down, but don't worry, we will restart the replay after we take a look at the RB comps. But the next one in line is the Wappen van Holland, Admiral's flagship, first rate, so this is the Admiral here, 106 gun. Followed closely behind, we've got another very large ship, 122 gun, Brut van Ang. Alkmar, heavy first rate. And finally, over on this side, we've got the Prince Friso, heavy first rate, 122 gun. So those are his four largest flagships. And then he's got two very small ships here in the front lines. He's got uh, the Cunning William, which is a bomb, bomb catch, and the Brie, a bomb catch as well. That sounds like a French name if I'm not mistaken. Then we've got some smaller ships over here, but still decently sized, 86 guns. We've got the Windhund, second rate ship of the line. And then if we hurry on back here, we've got the second ship, 86 uh, gun, 227 men. That's a decent amount of men on the second ship of the line. We've got De, De Ruiter, and I'm probably butchering these names, but I always try. I'm not going to be lazy enough to not try. Uh, we've got some even smaller ships over here to the far right flank. We've got Elswood, the 5th rate, 48 gun. And we've also got a 48 gun here, 5th rate, the Asendelf. Asin and two more ships to look at here. We've got the Ridden. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Ridder Shop, 5th rate, 48 gun. And then we have the Beer. Bear or Bears, the 6th rate 32 gun, so the smallest ship in the United Provinces, but still a decent size. And that is it for the Red Celts forces, so let's go ahead and take a look at the enemy fleet. The Navy on the battlefield today opposing the United Provinces is the United States, commanded by Son of Celebrimbor, and he's got some interesting ships here. He's actually brought two steamships. He has the Cabot, and then over here, he's got the Comet. And these names are going to be 100% easier for me to pronounce than the uh, Dutch ships. But we've got the Actian, the Admiral's flagship, which is a 106 gun. First rate ship, very, very large. But you can see that the Americans are kind of packed more into a, a spearhead formation. He's got some uh, ship of the lines, third, third rate ship of the lines here. He's got the Adder. We've got Virginia, and then we've got a rocket ship here, Lil <laughs> Lindian. Here's another second-rate ship. Oh, this is actually a second-rate ship of the line, the Vengeance, which is an awesome name for a ship. And then we've got another second-rate ship of the line, the Valiant. Following closely behind, we've got a few of the fifth-rates. We've got the Ardent and the Philadelphia. And then we've got way in the back a couple of fourth rates, uh, 58 guns. We've got the Raleigh and the Galatin. And that is it for the United States fleet. You can see them sailing forwards as we speak. So without further ado, guys, let's get to the battle. All right, guys, welcome to the battlefield. And we've got the American rocket ship already firing down onto the bomb catch here of the United Provinces. Luckily, all four shots did miss. And you can see that the Red Kelt has activated his massive 
heavy first rates on the left-hand flank to push forwards. And the Americans are already in a bit of a position. If we kind of zoom out and see the deployment here, the Red Celts got his very heavy ships on the left and the right flank with a few tinier ships in the center but the United States stands to get completely surrounded here. He's going to have to be very careful, uh, Celebrimbor, to not be outflanked and completely surrounded. But here we go. Looks like one did hit on the heavy first rate. And I do, I did try to adjust my volume beforehand, uh, or sorry, beforehand in this battle. But I, like I said, I don't think I've ever done an Empire Total War battle, so I'll have to kind of see how it turns out. And then if you guys are requesting more naval warfare and even some land battles in Empire, I can readjust my volume for you. But I do have the music turned way down, but I got the effects up just a little bit because I definitely want to hear this exploding cannon shot into the side of the American steamship here. And it is pushing straight forwards here. I think that the unit, uh, or sorry, the uh, Windhan here Second-rate ship of the line is going to be able to fire point blank into the steamship. Oh my goodness, just getting hammered here. Oh, come on, please open fire, wind bomb. Oh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to. But yeah, the Americans have charged pretty much headlong into this. The United Provinces kind of turning broadside to get some excellent shots on these steamships here. Look at them just tearing apart these ships. Now keep in mind, these steamships only have 34 guns, and they're taking on an 86-gun second rate of the line right now. So that is not a good position for the Americans. Here comes another American ship. Getting hit on both sides here now by the United Provinces. The American flag still strong as it sails right past the second rate ship of the line. The steamship is trying to fire into the second rate ship of the line. Looks like they have pulled up their sails for now. He wants to stop, I think, so he can fire on the back of the Delaware, which is now effectively cut off from the rest of the Navy. And look at this. We've got the United Provinces over here slowly moving in to cut off any chance of escape. Oh my goodness! I'm not sure, but I think that was the rocket ship exploding there. Very, very intense. No, the rocket ship is still there, so it's the bomb catch that's still alive. Or sorry, it was the bomb catch that exploded like that, so I'm gonna keep an eye on the United Provinces bomb catch. Okay, it looks like the Adder here, the third-rate ship of the line, losing some of their sails, so they are effectively dead in the water. I'm not sure if they'll be able to move at all anymore. And you can just see the carnage on the deck already, half the crew lying dead. Oh my goodness. Yeah, here comes the Windhawn once again. 79 out of their 86 guns still working just ripping holes into the side of this poor ship. The steamship is still alive, though. It is trying to move into a better position to fire down onto the ranks of the United Provinces. However, it looks like they are wavering. They've got hull damage here. This one has surrendered, so the Adder is effectively out of the battle. And this one over here is actually, it looks like it was on fire, and the Ardent is routing. And we've got another ship sinking below the waves there. I think that was their rocket ship. And here's the bomb catch for the United Provinces. I want to see if this thing explodes here, because that was a very intense explosion. The Brie, I believe, with my terrible French accent. It is shaken, and it looks like the United States is moving up the vengeance to try to get into to a better position to fire down broadside into this tiny bomb catch. But I don't want to waste too much of our time here because this is a very small ship. And actually, it looks like it's routing now. So if we zoom out and take a look at what's going on, it looks like the United Provinces do have some ships behind, although the uh, Asendelf and the Riddership, the fifth rate, both for the United Provinces, have been defeated. And the United States is getting a hold of their flank over here. That is a nice volley that's going to hit huge into the side of the Prince, uh, Prince Friso. 
But the United Province making some turns. You can see that they are moving their massive ships around to come and support the rear here. Uh, looks like the Comet Steamship has surrendered now. Some good shots from the Vengeance over here. And unfortunately, the Cabot Steamship has surrendered as well. So both steamships are down from the United States. But we've got the Virginia sailing straight into enemy waters here. You can see all three of these ships do have a decent enough position to fire down on it. So I'm not sure if this is a bit of a suicide here, bringing the third great ship of the line forwards. 45 out of 74 guns still operational. Oh my goodness, yeah. Definitely getting hit hard. And uh, that is Wap Wapin Van Holland, the Admiral's flagship. And then we've got Prince Fiso over here tearing apart the United States. And actually, it's getting hit on this side, too. Looks like a Raider, the second-rate ship of the line, just squeezing past the steamship to get a few shots into the other side of the third-rate ship of the line here. 32 guns now will be operational, and yeah, it looks like they have surrendered. And over here as well, it looks like this ship is trying to catch the... Con uh, Cunning William bomb catch, but it's ac it's actually shaken. They're trying to board it though to get rid of it for good. And we still got the bomb catch over here trying to escape. I'm not sure if the son of Celebrimbor is trying to use the vengeance to get rid of it for good. He's definitely trying to move into a better position to fire down on it. Still is a decent amount for the crew. 33 out of 45 men still on board, but 5 out of 14 guns, and oh my goodness, yeah, some big hits over here against this bomb catch. It looks like the United States is actually boarding the bomb catch here. Let's uh, try and zoom in and see. Yeah, so they've actually got some lines here, and they have pulled the bomb catch aside the United States ship, and you can see the crew members jumping down now and boarding the bomb catch. That's very risky though. We've seen how volatile these ships are. So well done to Son of Celebrimbor there. Oh my goodness. And we've got some fire from the Vengeance. This is actually a really bad idea though, given the fact that the United States Delaware crew is on board this bomb catch as we speak. And it is being fired down by friendly ships. Yeah, it looks like the United States Marines are getting the heck off that ship before it does blow. But let's see what else is going on here. So, yeah, the United Provinces are really losing the encirclement. You can see that the two uh, second rate and the fifth rate over here have had to break off and rejoin uh, the larger heavy first rates. So the United States has kind of broken that trap. You can see they still have the Blatton over here. We've got the Actian as well. Uh, unfortunately, Philadelphia has surrendered. The Raleigh is still going, though. And the Valiant as well, I think, which is uh, the United States' largest ship still on the seas and operational. Uh, we've also got the Vengeance as well, second-rate ship of the line, which is still operational. Some nice shots there. Unfortunately, just missing. And here we go. The Red Kelp slamming into the second rate ship here. Oh my goodness. And if I if I can get a good shot for you guys, uh, zooming in on the hull, you can, you can see right through to where some of the cannons and the crew members have actually been killed and destroyed. Now, where is the United States General, I'm wondering? Has he surrendered? Where's the Admiral's flagship? Here it is, the Actian. So it is still on the battlefield. Flagship first rate with 225 brave sailors and 87 guns still operational. It actually looks like it hasn't taken too much hull damage as well. So still definitely a contender in this match, but the much larger... United Provinces ships are getting some really nice shots on these smaller American ships. You can see the Raleigh over here, the fourth ship, great ship of the line, trying to get into a good position, but unfortunately, it if it does get into a good position to fire broadside, it risks being fired upon by 120 guns versus the 46 guns that it can dish out. 
but it looks like the bigger ship is actually more concerned about the Valiant. We've got the uh, Prince Friso firing down onto the Valiant as it tries to intercept it. And we've actually got a few smaller ships over here. We've got a 6th rate ship and the 5th rate that are going to try to take on the Vengeance, the second rate ship of the line, which uh, I think is my favorite ship on this battlefield so far. Really, really awesome sounding ship. The Delaware is routing. We've got the Windhund over here. Not sure if they're trying to go after the Glatton, but the Glatton actually looks like it is sailless. It has no sails left. So it is effectively dead in the water, unfortunately. However, you can see the United Provinces losing the Ritter's Chap, and a lot of the sailors actually drowning in the water. They are waving to the American ship for help, but I doubt that the Americans are going to do that. I think they have their own problems to deal with. But let's not miss too much more of this battle. It looks like the United States won't be able to claim victory here. The United Provinces just have too many large ships still left, and they are in kind of a decent enough position that they can fire down onto the American ships at will. However, it looks like we do have the Acti and the Admiral's flagship moving forwards with all haste, going after the Windhome, second-rate ship of the line. 50 guns versus 87 guns, so that may be a an American victory there, as long as none of the other ships do get involved. And actually, it looks like we've got the Vengeance over here, scaring away the Ellswood, the fifth rate. But they are pursuing very slowly. You can see that they do have a lot of damage to their sails. So that probably will prohibit them from catching the 5th rate ship. And here we go, some more shots into the broadside of the Vengeance from this really uh, small 6th rate here. Which apparently is winning slightly. The Ellswood is concerned of the hull damage it sustained during battle. Yep, yeah, I, I can get that. I'm hearing some massive fire though. Who's coming where? It looks like the American ships are kind of content to stay over here. They're not really wanting to go in a pursuit of this. Which is, is fair enough. The United Provinces definitely do have the upper hand. So if I was playing this battle, I probably would expect the United Provinces to come to me. Instead of suiciding my ships one, one by one. Okay, it looks like it is trying to turn... Oh, no! Yeah, it is trying to turn into a suitable position to fire down on the Ellswood, but the Ellswood was waiting for exactly that. And, but there we go, we've got some return fire. Huge hit onto the Ellswood, and the Ellswood actually starting to waver a bit. But not before it may get another hit onto the, onto the side of the Vengeance. Oh, hold, Vengeance, hold. Yes, it's actually routed this uh, fifth rate ship. Excellent job there. And yes, the sixth rate is retreating from the battlefield. And we've got these uh, ships doing a little bit of a circle, just firing down onto anything they can. Looked like the uh, Brute Van Alkmaar was firing down onto the Vengeance way over there. But that is quite a distance. I'm not sure how accurate the shots were. But yes, there we go. On fire. So it looks like this ship isn't even going to escape the battlefield. They've surrendered. There we go. So yes, they are not escaping. And it looked like the Delaware had returned, but then it broke right away. So what do we got here? We've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, not counting the Glatton because it's kind of out of the battle. So we've got four ships against seven ships. But I probably won't really count the 6th rate. It's a pretty small ship. Unfortunately, the Brute Van Alkmaar, the Prince Friso, the Du Reiter, and the Kurvalsten Van Brandenburg are still alive. And they are very large ships. Of course, we've also got the Admiral's flagship here as well. But here we go. It looks like we've got a showdown here. We've got the Windhone, second-rate ship of the line, moving in against the Actian, which is the American flagship. We 
got some shots. Good return fire by the American Admiral there. And actually, it looks like the United Provinces ship turning into a very unfavorable position. They're actually pushing pushing to intercept the American flagship. Unfortunately, though, there are no cannons on the front of the ship, so they've exposed themselves to a whole lot of fire while not being able to dish any fire back. Er, correct, correction. Okay, yeah, they've, they've got a couple of cannons uh, in the front. I did not realize that. Yeah, they've actually got four cannons facing the front, so, well, there you go. My apologies then, that was incorrect. However, four guns versus 86 guns, that seems a little suicidal. Uh, they did have 41 guns on the uh, on the broad side that they could have fired down uh, with. But it looks like they are routing now. I'm hoping that the American ship just turns around as it's routing and then just volleys right into it and makes it surrender. And I think that's exactly what they're going to try and do. Come on, get a good shot. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yes, there we go. Huge hit there, and yes, there we go. The wind hone has surrendered. 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 And just in case it didn't, we had the Valiant second rate ship of the line closing in to see the job done. So the American flagship really uh, towing the line here, doing a lot of work. However, again, we've still got these large United Provinces ships just waiting for the right time to strike. And they're just out of range, if you guys saw that. Uh, the fire from the second rate ship of the line falling about 100 feet short of the broad side of the ship. And they're just circling. They're just waiting. U.S. ships are definitely going to have to maybe make the move. I'm not sure. The Red Kelt doesn't seem really that interested in moving forwards. And with this very tight circle formation, what he's doing is he's making sure that it's almost like a Gatling gun, but in a slower motion, where the, uh, let's say the Prince Friso has an option to fire, so he fires into the Admiral's flagship, and then the uh, Brandenburg kind of uh, turns hard in the circle. Now he has a good position, so he fires down. And then the Holland, uh, the Van Holland has his turn, and then the Alkmaar has his turn, and then it's just a continuous cycle of fire. So it definitely is a good strategy, but it looks like the Red Kelt is breaking his circle formation, and he's forming into a line, and he is going to start going after the Vengeance, which is still kicking, and the Raleigh over here, which is still alive as well. However, we got the, uh, the Deruter over here, and the Smaller Bears. Six rate ship kind of contending with the Vengeance. The Vengeance, definitely a good ship in this battle as well. They've taken down many ships, but unfortunately, they have sustained quite a bit of damage to this side, as you can see. Uh, but some good fire there into the Deruter there. They're shaken, concerned of the hull damage. And they're actually firing uh, some of their front cannons at the Brandenburg as it moves into a position to fire. But if the Brandenburg is able to fire down one volley into the Vengeance, it will sink. Because, uh, yeah, I, I don't know which, which bar is which. I think that the green bar is morale and the yellow bar is the, the damage meter. Uh, if... I may be wrong about that because I don't play Empire too much, so uh, feel free to correct me down in the comments. But, oh yeah, oh, oh, there's people falling from the crow's nest there. That was epic, and we just saw, we just saw one of their main masts fall into the depths of the sea. A lot of the sails being ripped by the cannon fire. But yeah, we, we actually have a few people up in the crow's nest that fell to their death on the deck of the ship. That must be terrifying for the American sailors watching that happen. But yeah, the, the vengeance is pretty much dead now. We're going to get probably a good volley from the, from the Brandenburg here, so let's zoom in for that. Come on, 
fire. Here it comes. Actually, not that, not that good, surprisingly. They must not have too many operational cannons on that side. But we've also got the uh, Daruto over here as well, second rate ship of the line, which is in a position to fire as well. Oh no, and it looks like we've got the Raleigh routing over here. Taking a lot of damage there. Yeah, the Alkmaar still has 120 of its 122 guns, so it's basically untouched. Here comes the Admiral's flagship. Or, sorry, no, this is the Valiant. Where is the Admiral's flagship? Where is he gone? Oh, he's back here. He's at the back. But yeah, the Raleigh is routing. Okay, some return fire here on the Alkmaar from the Valiant. Only 50 guns left. Oh, this is going to be so sad to see the Vengeance fall. Such a good, awesome, that's such an awesome name for a ship, the Vengeance. Oh no, it looks like, it looks like the Brandenburg is. Yeah, that's where a lot of their cannons are operational on that one side. That was a huge hit on the Vengeance. And actually, we've got the, the Deruter over here on the other side, so they're going to be pummeled from both sides. And they've surrendered. The Vengeance is no more. So that is it for them. You can see the United Provinces coming over here. They were going to just rid the United States of one ship at a time, which is definitely a good strategy if you can isolate them. But we've got the Valiant second-rate ship of the line over here also wavering. I'm not sure if the Admiral is wavering. Doesn't look like it. And uh, the Glatton is wavering over there as well. Oh, and this is probably going to make them surrender. Yeah, huge hits there. And they've actually routed. Uh, they haven't surrendered yet, so they could come back to the battle. But with all of these ships just getting into position, I'm going to be surprised if it doesn't sink. Have mercy! And it surrendered. There we go. So I think the only ship left uh, is the Glatton, which is is basically useless. It can't move anywhere because it has no sails. So it's actually down to the American flagship, which is just epic in of itself. And it's confident. <laughs> confident with their 86 guns and 223 men that they can beat the United Provinces. I do have to say that Empire Naval Battles, the graphics are just pristine. Really, really nice. I don't know if uh, Napoleon is better, because I know Napoleon Naval Battles are just epic as well, as far as the graphics go, but I don't know if there's any difference between Napoleon and Empire as far as their graphics. It could kind of just be a copy-paste type thing. But we're just going to go ahead and fast-forward here, because... It looks like the United Provinces ships are going to have to pursue the Actian. Looks like the Actian is going to try and go and form up uh, some kind of defense with the Glatton. He still has 135 men in the crew. But yeah, we'll, we'll just fast forward here quickly. I could do a cut, but I don't really think there's too much time left in this battle. No, actually, it looks like the Glatton is... Or, sorry, it looks like the... American flagship here is not going to run. It just just did a little turn around the Windhond here, and it's just going it's just going for it. These brave men are going to die with honor. I wish I could uh, end like uh, go into the ship and see like it's sailing forwards. There we go, hitting the sails pretty hard on the American flagship. Oh. Nice volley there. I'm not sure if this uh, front sail is going down or not. It looked like it was 
kind of wavering a little bit. But the American flagship is still confident. Yeah, huge hits into the sails by this, this ship way over here, the sixth rate. Seems to be trying to immobilize the American Admiral. Come on, Red Kel, just commit. You can do it. Oh, it actually looks like the Admiral's flagship is going to be forming up to go after the sixth rate ship. Smart idea when you're down and, you know, you're down for the count, uh, going after the smaller ships, definitely getting, you know, small wins there. But I think they did miss their window of opportunity, the faster sixth rate ship moving just out of range of the flagship. And let's go ahead and fast forward once again. Oh, oh, nice. The sixth rate getting a good volley there into the flagship. And the Glatton over here. I think uh, the Red Kelt does realize that the Glatton is still present as well. And it looks like the United Provinces are going to surround them. We've got two of the heavy first rates on the one side. And then we've got uh, Van Brandenburg over on this side. Let's go ahead and press play again. I think that we're are, we are going to see the end of the American Admiral right here with this volley from the Brandenburg. Oh, yes. Ripping into those sails. Actually, a little high, though. It would have been better to kind of hit it on the, on the hull. Come on, there's no way this American <laughs> flagship can escape. Dismasted, so I wonder if that means that it's it's having trouble sailing. Oh! Oh, and here goes one of the sails! Okay, that is not good. That's going to leave the American flagship even slower in the water. There goes the center one. Down to one. Mast left. Oh, just no mercy, no mercy at all from the United Provinces. Third mass going down. The American flagship is shaken. I love the American flag still stands, though, in the face of adversity. It has not been knocked off the back of the ship. It is holding strong. And the crew member is actually, you know, still trying to move into a position to fire the guns. Here comes the Brandenburg again. Oh, some big hits into the back. We've got some wavering now. The Admiral wavering, and we've got the Prince Friso over here. Heavy first rate moving into position to volley down. Probably the killing stroke. Oh, no! Ooh. I love how they're not giving up, though. The epic last stand of this Admiral. Songs will be sung for this Admiral in battle. Here we go. This is going to be a sick volley from the Prince Friso. And there we go. It just ends immediately. I love it. So uh, this is a little bit of a bug because I wasn't playing this battle. This was actually the Red Kelt. I'm not sure why it says my name. But uh, he deployed 12 ships. Uh, it makes sense he deployed a little bit less because he had uh, the larger ships, which are much more expensive. And uh, sent up Kelle Brimbor here as the United States, deploying 14 with 11 losses. And uh, he killed one of the ships. So uh, because these are these are such low kills, because the surrendered ships actually don't count as uh, killed ships. So it looks like two were sunk by the Red Kilt and one was sunk by Calibrimbor. And let's take a look at the unit statistics here for, I believe this would be the Red Kilt's forces. So 102 by the Prince Friso. They definitely did some work on the battlefield. And next highest, I guess, would be the... 
Van Holland. So thanks so much for watching guys, if you really would like to see some more Empire Total War on the channel or just some naval battles in general, just let me know. But until next time guys, I thank you so much for watching, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, and as always, I will see you in the next one.